Hey everybody, I just saw a pair trigger warning just in case. <clears throat> it's kind of windy out and I'm just sitting out here. I was uh, doing some chalk with my son earlier, but I'm kind of feeling alone and I don't know. I just feel like I need to talk and I don't know how's everyone doing. Um, I don't know. It was kind of nice out today, it was hot, and then now it's really nasty and windy, like half my uh, shed is broken, like the back side broke off last time, and then the other side is broken, my umbrella's on the ground because of the wind, so it's like, um, the weather's been changing like crazy here, so, in California, um, um, I don't know, got a lot going on, try not to feel overwhelmed, um, I don't know, just uh, wanted to say hey and see what anybody else is up to and um, what do you do when you feel alone because <coughs> um, I know my hands are kind of cracking and bleeding because of this weather when the winds, my hands get really bad and, and dry up so I'm just like, well I want to do some more arts and crafts but I can't so um, maybe I'll watch something. I was listening to music earlier so I'm just trying to keep myself um hey sweetie <sighs> I don't know I'm just I feel overwhelmed I almost lost it in my doctor's office today like I don't know how I kept my cool but I did I just wanted to like lose it I just wanted to be like I don't know I was almost about to say like I'm moving to Texas because I'm done with it here with the healthcare system here the hospital here all my surgeons and doctors have are pawning me off to this other hospital. Love you, sweetie. I'm just so mad that I can't have my surgery yet. I told, I told, I told them how it was. I was like, okay, I've done all my procedures. I've done all my appointments. I feel comfortable with y'all already with, with, you know, doing all the surgery and everything. And I know that you want me to get this other opinion at this other place to fix my surgery because my robotic surgery a year ago didn't work. Um, they didn't fix the problem, so I have to redo that surgery. Plus, uh, there's two other surgeries they have to combine and then whatever else happens in between. So I know that they're trying to cross their T's and dot their I's, but I kind of told them today, I'm just like, okay... I've been waiting a long time and suffering. He goes, I know you're suffering and I know and I see your skins and he explained my MRI and everything to me. It was really bad. He's like, the damage is really bad in there. Like they have to really, it's really extensive and they were scared to do it. He said that he's only heard of two cases of this happening, having to redo a surgery and um, that the other person, I'm the second person. The other person, he said they ended up having to redo the surgery, but it didn't work, and um, they had a permanent colostomy bag, and that's what I'm afraid of. So they want me to see this robotic specialist that's an hour and a half, two hour drive from me, which I can't drive right now anyways until my numbness comes back on my left side, which still don't know. See my other doctor tomorrow, my primary doctor for referrals for a neurologist, waiting for the therapist to call me back to see if she's going to help me or the people that um, she knows that can help me with uh, CPTSD, DID, OCD, generalized anxiety disorder, you name it. Um, I have so many physical health issues, I can't even name them. I forgot, I lost count. I have over 100 allergies, so it's like ridiculous when I go in there and I've had five, wait. One, two, like four or five, sur five surgeries, six surgeries, so many procedures. I can't even remember. I've had so many MRI, CT scans. And they said, you're only supposed to have two CT scans in your life. I'm like, um, yeah, I don't even know how many I've had. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I, you know, I had got scared on Friday doing a stroke code on me at the hospital because of my left side numbness. It just came in all of a sudden. I had confusion right before that. Shouldn't have been driving anyways, but I had to. Um, and then they sent me home, well, transferred me to another hospital, did more tests, MRI, you name it. I, I was trying to be calm. I guess that's why, I mean, I don't know. I had music. I brought my tablet. I had my charger. So I made sure that I was good. Thanks, sweetie. 
Oh, I hate surgery. I'm scared for the surgery because they're saying like so many things, sepsis, all this stuff, like, you know, there's so much damage in the thing, but how badly that the mesh that they messed up for my last surgery is so messed up with the tissue and everything that they probably won't be able to repair it. So I'm afraid that I'm gonna have permanent, permanent damage or worse. And Friday, them asking me at the hospital, um, for end of life treatment stuff. And it really freaked me out. And I'm, I'm getting, I'm, it's freaking me out. Like I am not ready. Like I already did a surgery a year ago and it didn't work. And I've had so many doctors and ER doctors call me a hypochondriac and shit. And finally my scans prove that the last surgery didn't work and that the last surgeons messed up my surgery. And then the surgeon before them that I had to have surgery for injured me. And I reported this to my insurance back in Maryland and they didn't do crap about it. He also harassed me on his cell phone, asked me to send the pictures of my body parts for to do the surgery for colorectal. Um, I, of course I said, no, that was inappropriate and I have PTSD and he just laughed at me. So when I called his office, the nurse on the phone, it's recorded. So they're dumb as shit. He's the number one colorectal specialist for Johns Hopkins in Maryland. And I'm now that I found out that all of this is all due to him and to the other surgeons that failed my surgery. I could do malpractice. They did all these saying, oh, red flags, red flags. And no one would help me if I reported or did anything. And after I have this surgery, you better believe I will. Thank you, sweetheart. I don't, I don't know. I just am like, with everything else I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with all these mental health issues, all this stuff from finding out about my bio mom, about my dad, who I thought was my dad, and being kidnapped and everything. And I'm 31 years old finding about this stuff. And... I don't even know what to believe anymore and it's hard to trust anymore and I've been pushing people away and I just I don't know what to do anymore and I'm getting pawned off to another hospital and they're like oh well if they can do your surgery then you'll just find another urogyne surgeon and I'm like all right the GI surgeon just told me last week that she was pawning me off and now you're telling or two weeks ago and now you're telling me you're going to abandon me too Okay, fine. Fuck y'all. That's what I wanted to say and just walk out. But no, it was a military hospital. I have to be respectful and I'm always respectful when I talk to anybody. And right now I am just like beyond like, I don't even know. Like this is bullshit. Thank you, Nicole. I'm just like from Tasmania. Wow. Wonder how, how far away that is. I don't even know. I'm just like a freaking mess. And I told my husband that like today he came with me the first time in eight years he has gone to any of my appointments with me. Finally. And he was like, oh, the doctor was being really nice and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's because you were there. You don't know that he wanted a psych consult last time that he saw me because he found out that I have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. Not, he wasn't afraid that I have PTSD or anything like that or anxiety and crap. He was scared that my alters are going to come out and stuff. I said, call all of my other surgeons, all of the times that I've had surgery, talk to all my other doctors, talk to my last psychologist in Maryland, and she will tell you that that has never happened. It has never happened. I am in control of my body when I have certain things. I will not go into a surgery or go to an appointment if I am disassociative at all. I want to be fully aware of my body when I have procedures done. I would not put that on somebody else to freak somebody out anyways because I'm still learning about it myself. I'm still I'm waiting on a new therapist. She called me yesterday. She says she's going to call me back in a couple of days. She's uh, looking about for someone that deals with DID, hopefully, <sighs> because I'm about to lose it because these doctors are abandoning me because I have mental health issues. Uh, I've been calm the whole time. Even my last, uh, not this last inpatient time, but the la other time inpatient for uh, internal medicine ward because they misdiagnosed me last time in the ER three times in a row at the same hospital where I was gonna have surgery, 
Well, now they're pawning me off to another hospital to have surgery somewhere else with new doctors to start all over again. I don't even know these people. You have to build up trust for people. Well, fine, whatever. I don't trust these people anymore. Fine. I hope these other people will help me because I'm done with it. Why am I trying to keep on with these doctors that don't even give a shit about me? It doesn't seem like they give a shit about me and I don't want to be having permanent damage like he said about the other, the other, I'm the only, I'm the second person with this to happen. Okay. Well, that seems rare. Well, okay. Well, why didn't you tell me last year that you didn't want to help me? And I could have got an opinion from the other robotics a long time ago. Why did you make me wait past the holidays and everything else and be in pain, suffering? I've, lo I've lost five to seven pounds every week for the last four or five weeks. Since I moved here, I was almost 200 pounds. I'm down to 164 and I'm not even trying to lose weight. I need to lose weight anyways because I was on a bunch of medications that were making me sick and gained weight and stuff anyways. But this is not a healthy way to lose weight. And no one at the hospital or even in the ER or anything all this time that I've been in the hospital, I'm in IVs and blood patch and all this and that, freaking me out, stroke coat, all this nonsense and stuff, freaking me out. Still don't know why I have the left sided numbness since Friday. It's still there. And there's no answers. Yet they're calling me a hypochondriac, like, and then palm me off. I don't even understand. Like they said, my scans show proof of all of this. So I don't even know what to say anymore. But thank you for letting me vent, whatever. I'm just. Sorry for the language. I don't usually cuss, but my son's inside, so I don't cuss around my son. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to try to find something to distract myself or, like, calm down. Jill, we've been chatting on Messenger, and if anybody wants to talk, whatever, just comment. Let me know. Um, I'm shaking right now because it's kind of cold. It got very windy out. Um, yeah, that's why this is all broken. This is my shed. It's uh, broken. <laughs> It broke with the last winds, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to keep my cool and not lose it. And hopefully this uh, therapist will call me back and let me know if she's going to help me or someone else. Because I don't know. Talking about it is the only way to let it, let it out. You know what I mean? You can't just keep it bottled up. Otherwise, I don't know. Like, like I was, like I did, like just cussing it, just cussing it out, cussing, whatever, um, I don't know, thank y'all for the love, I really appreciate it, Jill, you're such an awesome friend, for real, I can't wait to meet in person someday, like, you really have been, you've had my back, like, for real, you too, Nicole, thank you so much, I really appreciate it, you can send me a message as well, um, I'm about to go inside where it's warm, for real. But I found my bracelet that my uh, mother-in-law got me for my birthday a while back. It's like, uh, there's my butterfly tattoo, but it's a bracelet that she got me and it's a wrap around. So that made me feel better going into my appointment because my mother-in-law has been there for me a lot and she's waiting to know when I have surgery because she's supposed to come out here. But after March 15th, she's got stuff scheduled and I told these doctors this and they don't seem to care or that my husband is military and has to work. Well, because I can't uh, feel my left side of my body, I am not allowed to drive. So he has to take off of work right now. And so this is like, it's frustrating. And if anybody else can relate, just, I don't know, let me know. Or just tell me how your day is going, hopefully better than, than that. I mean, it could be worse. I've had worse days. I'm just dealt with worse doctors. I don't know. I'm just, mm. Just wish I could really tell the doctors how I really feel, but I just can't because I don't want that in my record. Uh, the, like, she's crazy. The girl with the crazy hair. <laughs> they won the DID, and then they're really going to be putting me on, like, in the media and stuff. I'll be like, nope. I'm not going to be a guinea pig, and I'm glad that they don't really care about DID because then, fine. I don't know. I need to figure out what's going on because 
with all these traumas and flashbacks that I'm having lately, this is just insane and I'm trying to keep it cool, go to my appointments, make sure I make lists and stuff, uh, bring in all my paperwork. I got my, um, got my MRI results for, for colorectal to bring to the robotics because they weren't going to send it to them, they told me. So fine, I'm glad that I got it. So <laughs> anyways, I can't wait to meet you too. Um, well, I'm going to get off of here and go inside because it's getting windy, if you can't tell. But, um, alrighty. Take care, everybody. This group has helped me so much. I love this group. It's like a family. Take care, PTSD buddies. PTSD buddies. I can't even talk. It's so cold out here right now. Take care.